Good morning, students, and welcome to the course CHE2112. This is an introductory biochemistry course. We are basically introducing you to biochemistry. Right. In this course, we will look at biophysical chemistry. We will then proceed to look at biomolecules, uh, bioenergetics, including enzymes, and then lastly, we will look at nutrition. Okay, so these are the components that we are going to look at. Okay. Right. So let's start by looking at what biochemistry is. What is biochemistry? Okay. Right. From the onset, we know that bio means life. Okay? Bio means life. And by life, we mean living organisms. Living organisms. Okay? Of course, at this level, I want to believe that you all know the characteristics of a living organism. A living organism must be able to reproduce, it must be able to grow, it must be able to respond to stimulus, it must be able to eat, uh, and many more characteristics. Okay? Now, by living organisms, we will include all organisms that are classified as prokaryotes as well as eukaryotes as well as eukaryotes so those are the living things uh, if I may divide it further we are looking at humans okay, as living organisms we are looking at protozoa as living organisms we are looking at fungi as living organisms. We are looking at bacteria. Of course, we will include viruses, although they are not living organisms, but we will include them. This list is endless. There are many other organisms that have not included. Okay. Right. So, that is what life is. Therefore, we can simply say biochemistry is the chemistry, is the chemistry of life. Okay? Chemistry of life. Biochemistry is the chemistry of life. Put differently, we can say it is a science. It is a science of chemical basis. Chemical basis of life. Okay? So in other words, we are saying in biochemistry, we seek to explain life at a molecular level. Okay? So one of the objectives, okay, objectives in biochemistry is that we seek to explain, explain life at chemical level, at chemical level, or at molecular level. Okay? That is chemistry. Okay? 
So biochemistry is a chemistry of life. In other words, it's a science of chemical basis of life. Okay, the objective of biochemistry is to explain life at chemical level or at molecular level. We want to explain life using the molecules that are found in living organisms. Okay. Having stated that, <coughs> okay, we must know that when you are looking at a living organism, okay, any living organism, the structural unit of a living organism is a cell. Okay? The structural unit of a living organism is a cell. Okay? Or putting it holistically, a living organism, if you look at a living organism, it is made up of systems. Okay? A number of systems, eh? respiratory system, endocrine system, uh, excretory system, that is what makes up uh, an organism. Then the systems eh, are also made up of <coughs> organs. And then the organs themselves are made up of uh, tissues. The tissues themselves are made up of uh, cells. Okay? So the basic structural unit of a living organism is a cell. The simplest structural unit of a living organism is a cell. Okay? So you can study life at the level of an organism, at the level of a system, at the level of organ, at the level of tissue, or at the level of a cell. In biochemistry, we want to study life at the level of a cell. Okay? At the level of the cell. Okay. Right. Now, when you look at the cell, let's say we look at the animal cell. The animal cell, from biology, we have learned that it has a cell membrane, which I'm writing in short as CM. Now, let me write it in full. The cell membrane, which is a sheath that covers the content of the cell. Okay. Then you have the cytoplasma, okay, the substance in which the content of the cell are dissolved. Of course, inside the cytoplasma, you may have the major organelle there, which we will call a nucleus. Okay? Within the cell, you will have other organelles, like you may have the mitochondria. Just mentioning a few, mitochondria. Okay? You may have <coughs> uh, Goji bodies, for instance. Okay, you may have Goji or Gogi bodies or Gogi apparatus. Okay, and many other organelles and the inclusions. Okay, uh, that is a represented a representation of an animal cell, as it were. Now, when you look at what makes up the cell membrane, what makes up the cytoplasma, what makes up the Golgi apparatus, what makes up the uh, nucleus or the mitochondria, these are just molecules, or these are just chemicals that makes up all these contents of a cell. And in biochemistry, that is what we labor to understand and study. Okay? Right. So, if you look at the contents, what makes up these, what are they? Okay? What makes up these contents of a cell? One, you have what are known as the biomolecules. Okay? biomolecules or macromolecules. But it's better we say biomolecules because some of them are not macromolecules. Okay? The biomolecules, we can say you have things like the proteins. Okay? The proteins, you have carbohydrates. 
okay, carbohydrates, you have and nucleic acids, nucleic acids. These are large molecules that have about 50,000 grams. Okay, their weight is about 50,000 grams. That we call these as macromolecules. But other molecules that we might include <coughs> include lipids. Okay, lipids. Okay, they are also biomolecules. But in addition to these, you find other smaller molecules. Smaller molecules such as ions. Okay, you find smaller molecules. Such as the ions. You may have ions, okay, which include which may include calcium ions, potassium ions, sodium ions, okay, chloride ions, uh, uh, bicarbonate ions, all these and many more other ions we will find them in the cell as it were. And lastly, you will also find another molecule called water. So these are chemicals that make up the cell. Okay? These are molecules that make up the cell. So in biochemistry, what are we going to study? In biochemistry, we will study the constituents of the cell. Okay? We we'll look at the macromolecules, we we'll look at the ions, we we'll look at water which is found inside the cell. But we we'll go a step further and study the structures of these constituents. Structures of constituents. Okay, we want to study the structure of proteins, the structure of carbohydrates, the structure of lipids, the structure of water, okay? With a view of understanding life, with a view of explaining it, life, okay? But of course, structure has an impact on the function of the constituents. So look at and study the function of the constituency of the cell. Okay. Uh, then we'll proceed on and look at a variety of reactions, a variety of reactions of these constituents of a cell. What reactions do carbohydrates go undergo, or lipids, or nucleic acid? What kind of reactions do they undergo? And lastly, we will look at what processes, what processes do these constituents go through or undergo? Okay. Right. And basically, that's what makes it biochemistry. Biochemistry will seek to study the constituents of a cell the structures of the constituents of a cell, the functions of the constituents of a cell, the reactions of the constituents of a cell, and the processes of the constituency of the cell, the processes that they will go through. So you can see that biochemistry is basically a science of the chemical basis of life. We seek to explain life at the level of the chemical constituents of the cell. Right. I told you that we'll look at various uh, topics. One of the topics that we will look at and that we'll start with is uh, biophysical chemistry. Biophysical chemistry. Okay. Right. But it's important before we actually 
zero in and look at biophysical chemistry to understand that biochemistry is quite broad. Okay? It is an interdiscipline course. Okay? You find that within biochemistry you will find it very related to cell biology. Okay? It is very related to cell biology. It is also very related to molecular biology. Okay? Molecular biology. Okay? Of course, needless to say that you cannot understand physiology fully if you do not understand biochemistry. Okay? Neither can you understand pathology without understanding biochemistry. Okay? Neither will you be a good pharmacist if you do not understand biochemistry. Okay? I've just picked a number of uh, fields, but there are many fields that are related to biochemistry. Many biochemical techniques are used in all these uh, courses or fields. Right, so our first topic, as it were, is biophysical chemistry. Biophysical chemistry. Okay. What is biophysical chemistry? Biophysical chemistry, we can say it is a study of physical properties of biological molecules. Okay? Biophysical chemistry is the study of the physical properties of biological molecules. Okay? In physical biochemistry, we seek to understand the behavior of molecular or other biological molecules using the physical processes. Okay? We want to understand the behavior of biological molecules using the physical processes. Right. The first topic that we look under this uh, biophysical chemistry is water. We said that water is one of the constituents of a cell. If anything, it accounts to about 60 to 70 percent of the contents of a cell. Okay? So it's a major constituent of a cell. If that is the case too, it is good to start studying uh, biochemistry by looking at water. Okay, conventionally we write water as H2O. Okay. From the layman's point of view, one would think that the geometrical structure of water is a linear structure which can be drawn in this manner. But that is not the case. Okay, that is not the case. Why? Simply because if you look at these lone pairs which I've indicated with dots, these lone pairs eh, repel one another. Because electron and electrons, negative and negative, there is a repulsion. So these lone pairs repel one another. Furthermore, the lone pairs repel the electrons that are found in this bond. Remember in this bond there are two electrons. These electrons, the bonding electrons, are repelled by the lone pair, pushing this bond to move downwards. And then these lone pairs also repel the bonding electrons that are here, pushing it downwards. So that at the end of it all, you are going to have a structure that will look like this. Instead of a straight line, you are going to have uh, this kind of a geometrical structure. Okay, so that you do not have 180 degrees in between the three elements, hydrogen, oxygen, and hydrogen. But instead you have an angle of about 104 
0.5 degrees. Slightly less than the 109.5, a typical angle, bond angle of tetrahedral molecules. So the first property, okay, the first property of water that we find is that geometrically it is a bent, it has a bent shape. Okay? Geometrically it has a bent shape and not a linear shape. We've tried to explain why it is not a linear shape. And it tends to have an angle, bond angle between hydrogen, oxygen and hydrogen of 104.5 degrees. Right. The second property, okay, the second property okay, the second property if we look at I'll mention the second property first I want to explain. If you look at water written this way, okay, oxygen of the water has the electronegativity, not only oxygen of water, oxygen in general has electronegativity of 3.0, whereas the, that of hydrogen is 2.1. Okay? So there is an electronegativity difference of 0.9, which is a very significant difference. Because of this electronegativity difference, it means that the bonding electrons in the bond, these bonding electrons are pulled towards the, the element that has high electronegativity. Consequently, oxygen becomes partially negative because electrons are drawn towards it. Okay? If we are drawing electrons away from hydrogen, it means that hydrogen becomes partially positive. What has brought about this separation of charges is the uneven sharing of electrons in the bond. Uneven sharing of electrons in the bond. Okay. Similarly, uh, this hydrogen becomes uh, positively charged, partially positively charged, and the oxygen becomes partially negative charge. So oxygen has a, a partial charge of minus 2, whereas the hydrogen has a partial charge of each uh, plus 1. Okay. So we create a polar molecule. Okay. We have a, post a positive charge on one end and a negative charge on one end. So we are saying water is a polar molecule. That's the second property. Water is a polar molecule. But we can go further and say that we have actually created two poles, negative pole and a positive pole. So water is a dipole. It has two poles, di, two, pole, uh, <coughs> you can say direction. So it has a, a positive pole, and the negative pole. So water becomes a, a dipolar molecule. Okay. Thirdly, that's the second property. Third property. Okay. Um, <coughs> I want to draw water molecule with a different marker. So let me draw water molecule this way. So what we have found is that the hydrogen is partially positively charged, oxygen is partially negatively charged. So since hydrogen <coughs> is electron deficient, it will look for wherever it can find electrons to share with. So if there was another water molecule here, we draw another water molecule here, okay, with two lone pairs. 
Okay? So this hydrogen can share these electrons from oxygen because oxygen has excess electrons, so it can share these electrons with this hydrogen. So a physical bond, this is not a chemical bond, a physical bond is formed due to electronegativity differences in this oxygen and in this hydrogen, making this hydrogen electron deficient, seeking for other electrons, therefore it tends to be attracted towards these electrons and forming a physical bond. This physical bond is called a hydrogen bond. So water is able to form hydrogen bond with another water molecule. One water molecule can form a hydrogen bond with this water molecule. Okay? But if there was another water molecule here, okay, another water molecule there, okay, using the same principle, there will be a physical bond created there. Okay? Uh, similarly, if there was another water molecule here, a hydrogen bond can be formed, a physical bond can be formed. If another water molecule was here, okay, then there will be a physical bond created there. Okay, so what I'm trying to put across is that water molecules are able to form hydrogen bonds with another water molecule. In this case, if you look at the water molecule, which is in red, written in red, okay, we can say that water molecule can bond with four other water molecules. Okay, with four other water molecules. Okay, but remember, this is a physical bond. It's not a chemical bond. Okay, it is formed, it can break. It is formed, it can break. Okay. You find that the time it will last for this bond to be there is about one nanometer. One nano, sorry, one nanosecond. It's time, not it's uh, length. It only takes one nanosecond. After that, it is broken. Okay? Because it's a physical bond, it can easily be broken. Okay? The duration of the, this physical bond is one nanoseconds. It's a physical bond, meaning that it's a very weak bond. Okay, it is a physical bond, meaning that it's a very weak bond. It can easily be broken. Okay, if you look at the bond dissociation energy, the energy that you'd require to break this bond, which we are calling it the bond dissociation energy. It ranges in the values of 20 to about 100 kilojoules per mole. Okay. It's a weak bond. Energy in this range can easily break it. Okay. Its duration is a one nanosecond. Okay. So this hydrogen bond, as we can see,